welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Alex, and today I have a very special guest, my partner, Keaton. Hi, everybody. And we are going to be donating a massive amount of books to our local library. It should be about 37 by our account. And Keaton, do you want to help me hold up the basket Let's so that it. they can see? Because it's a huge number of books. Okay, so I want it to be in the camera, so... Ah! That's staying in. <laughs> all right, now that you've seen our giant stack that comedically fell over, we didn't plan that at all. Keaton is actually going to go first with the books that he is unhauling because my share of them is way larger and it's going to take me forever to talk about. So, and just as a disclaimer, the books I'm donating, I'm donating out of spite. Uh, not because I wish to give these and bestow them upon anybody in the world, but Really, I just can't stand to have them in my house anymore. So the first one is The City at the End of Time by Greg Bear. Um, this is one that I recently uh, finished reading a few months ago. And I can officially say that this is one of the strangest books that I have ever read. It is weird. It is sci-fi. It is high sci-fi to the 11th degree. I can honestly say that, 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 again, haven't ever came across anything like this. The story doesn't make any sense relative to itself. But it is oddly compelling just because you're wondering how in the heck did this guy come up with such a strange idea. And it's like that throughout the whole book. You you read it, you finish it, you think that's it, and you have no clue what's going on. So I am more than happy to get rid of this and have somebody else go on the strange, same strange journey that I did. And he told me a lot about this book while he was reading it, and I can confirm that I have absolutely no desire to read it whatsoever, which is why I'm like, yeah, go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, cats. Cats apparently can go through space-time. That's one a very important plot point that comes on later at later on in the book. Uh, the second one is uh, All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. This is a like neo-southern gothic noir crime thriller. Uh, a lot of words. The, the premise is that a uh, sheriff, uh, the first black sheriff in I believe a Virginia county, is having to investigate a, a shooting that quickly uncovers a bunch of mass murders in a sleepy southern town. There are racial tensions, there's this, there's that. It's kind of a mess of a mystery. It had some really, really good bits of writing. Like there's a phrase, the world outside was cold enough to pinch your cheeks a little, things like that, um, that I really enjoyed. Do not regret reading this, but I definitely don't want to read it again. In a similar vein, this is Ozark Dogs by Eli Craner. I knew Eli Craner when he was Coach Craner at my high school. I did not know that he apparently got into writing Southern Gothic stories and crime thrillers. This is one where an old man goes on a rampage after his uh, granddaughter's kidnapped. It's a hot mess. It's full of itself. There are neo-Nazis, there are drugs, guns, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of saying the same phrase over and over again. I don't want to ever read this book again. It made me feel dirty and miserable. Um, and that's, a, that's weird because I actually kind of enjoy feeling dirty and miserable sometimes with books. Don't know what that says about me. Me too. But this, this, is, this isn't my thing. This is Cathedral of the Sea um, by Mr. Falcones. I'm not going to pronounce his first name out of respect. Cathedral of the Sea is actually a really fun and good book. It's a historical book. I'm going to quickly yeah, open it up it. here. About Barcelona, Barcelona, Spain. And I believe it's in the 14th century. It's, I know it's medieval. I can't remember. But it's about a guy who grows up in Barcelona poor. He becomes a great carpenter. He gets into money lending and money changing and, 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 and trading and things like that for a while. He becomes a soldier. All this stuff. Very, very cool premise. And then he marries the child that he adopted as a ward. And it gets really creepy. And it kind of sank the book for me. I read this back in college. I kept it around because I thought I might read it again. But I realized over time... Wow, that just really, really tarnished the book. So, off to the library it goes. And one more. Yeah, and the last, and certainly the least. <laughs> uh, this is The Lone Ranger. Ha, huh? see what the see what they did there. This is a college book that I bought for an archival course once upon a time. Uh, this book was very expensive. I've only read, I think, like five pages out of it after the professor yelled at us. And, and never did anything with it again. Uh, this was a complete waste of money. I hope it helps somebody in the future. Thank you very much, Keaton, for coming on the show and actually having your first, like, official Yeah, appearance. we got on the show. Yeah, because in the past he has been in an episode. However, he's always been in the background and he didn't really show his face prior, though you were, you did kind of peek in in some live shows. 
before. So I'm really excited that he was interested in coming on and talking about the books that he wanted to unhaul. So thank you so much, honey. I'm officially part of the Frank Fiction Cinematic Universe. That's right. Absolutely. All right. And then for the massive stack that are my books, Keaton did such a fantastic job talking about his. So hopefully I will be just as engaging given that my pile is extensive. The first one up, I'm just going to go based off of what's at the top of the pile because there's just so many here. I am going to be donating my copy of Bunny. Most of the books that are in this stack I have read. I am not one of those people that really likes to unhaul books that I haven't read before. I did that more when I was a kid and it's always bothered me because it just feels like a waste of money. So out of all of these, there are only three that I have not read and they're for pretty good reasons overall. But Bunny is going to be the first one. I liked this story. It was okay. It's not something that I would ever have a desire to read again and it got its own review. So if you'd be interested in hearing about that and all of my thoughts on it, you can definitely go check it out. My next book is going to be The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This was another story that when I read it, it was just not one that blew me away. I really liked the writing style. I think Alex E. Harrow is incredibly talented with her prose and the way that she builds a story and can build suspense, but the execution of the story is really where I had a problem with it. I'm interested to pick up another book by her sometime in the future, but I'm very comfortable giving away my copy of The 10,000 Doors of January, which I only gave like three stars. This next book is one that I've had since I was a child and I accidentally stole from one of my elementary school teachers and I've had it ever since. And that is America's Most Haunted and it was a History Channel Presents book through Scholastic. And if it tells you anything, this book when it was originally published cost $5. I don't know what it would cost today, but it would definitely be more than $5. And it had some really cool illustrations in it and uh, some really great text and stories and fun facts and pop quizzes that you can do. So I definitely think that a child will get a lot of enjoyment out of this today. Some other ones that I've had since I was a kid are these little pocket Pokedexes that I got from Scholastic. Actually, these may have been gifted to me from a friend. I was a huge Pokemon fan when I was a kid. I had more cards than anybody that I knew. My collection was massive and they were just a lot of fun. You know, having the different Pokemon in here that I could go through and it gave different characteristics of them. It didn't like do anything for the games or the card game. It was just a fun collector's item and I definitely think the Pokemon is still relevant today and again a child will really enjoy these. This next one is Poison by Sarah Pinborough. I did not really enjoy this book. The only thing that saved it was the very ending which caught me off guard and that's really what prevented the story from just being a solid one for me. The ending made it at least a two to maybe a two and a half but definitely not a book that I would recommend and it is a wicked Snow White tale so there are other similar princess story retellings in this series by the same author. I don't have any intention of reading any of those either. Then I have Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars but because it's a four star that means that it's a book I probably am not going to read again in the future. To me a four star book is one that I will read one time and I definitely think that other people should read this and that they would really enjoy this historical kind of retelling based off of a real woman but it's a fictionalized story story of her last days of life. It was about a woman who was being executed and it was on her road to execution and the family that she lived with and it kind of tells the story of why she was being charged with murder in the first place. Definitely think that this will be a great addition to the library. Then I have Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. This was a book that I had for, it was about eight years before I got around to reading it and I definitely think that because I waited I was not the intended audience for this book anymore. So that played a huge part in why I didn't enjoy it all that much. But the cool thing about this story is that it flips back and forth between perspectives of the narrative that the main character wrote and is a book that she is currently having published and her life going through the publishing process as somebody who just graduated from high school. So definitely a young adult story. She's living on her own for the first time. She's experiencing romance for the first time. She's figuring out what the publishing industry is like. I learned a lot from this book about the publishing industry and that's probably the biggest credit I can give to it. 
but definitely not a book that I would necessarily recommend and not one that I want to keep. The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay was one that was recommended to me by Kayla from Books and Lala. She said that this was one of her favorite books of all time, that she thought it was a great story. I ended up giving it about a two star. I really didn't enjoy it. This is not my cup of tea. I know that because it's a very popular national bestseller that there will be somebody who gets enjoyment out of it, but I definitely don't want it in my collection anymore. This next one is one of the three books that I haven't read, and that is The Girl in the Spider's Web. So I read the original Millennium Trilogy that was created by Stieg Larsson, and if you ever saw The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo or any of the movie adaptations that came from the first three books, then you are familiar with this series. Unfortunately, Stieg Larsson ended up passing away after he finished his manuscript for the third book, and I thought that where he left off the story was a great end cap to the trilogy, and I really don't think that somebody else should have picked up where he left off and continued on with these characters. So I had already purchased this copy of the book before I had finished the trilogy, and then after I finished it I realized that I didn't want to read this anymore, so I'm going to be giving this one away as well, and that's why I didn't read it. This next one is a book that both Keaton and I read and we both hated, and that is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. Now, I do have her other series, which is the fifth season that I still have to read. So this was my first experience with N.K. Jemisin, and I really did not jive well with this book at all, and both Keaton and I really just didn't have a great experience with it. I know a lot of people love this. Somebody is going to enjoy it. I have no idea whether the library will have any issue with the fact that this is a book of the month copy. Hopefully not, but I'm going to give it to them anyway, and somebody else can take a perusing into this sci-fi world. Then I have Homesick for Another World by Otessa Moshveg. The reason I didn't like this book, honestly, I would argue was more my fault than the fault of the author. Now, I don't like her writing style at all. I think that these stories were creepy and not my kind of creepy, like creepy in a way that I was wondering what was going through the author's mind when she wrote these stories. I thought because of the cover that these were supposed to be science fiction short stories, but they're not at all. I am not really sure what you would categorize this as. It's not really a horror short story collection, definitely not science fiction, not even really sure I want to put it in the category of literary fiction. This is just uncomfortable. These are stories that are meant to kind of get under your skin and none of the characters where we get their perspectives are people that we're supposed to like. They all have pretty significant issues and I am not really sure that I ever want to read anything from Otessa Moshveg ever again. So we'll see. This one is another book I've had for a really long time and it is The Killer Book of Serial Killers. So this is a retelling of obviously many of the serial killers that have been found throughout history and a little bit about them and the crimes that they committed. I was really engaged with this back when I was in high school, so that's how long I've had this copy, but I definitely don't see myself wanting to read this in the future. I don't have an interest in it anymore, but true crime is incredibly popular right now, so I'm sure somebody would be very happy to see this at the library. I have another book of the month story, which is Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala. It is a trilogy series, or at least it's part of a series called A T.T. Rosie's Kitchen Mystery. I will say this was a cute narrative. I gave it three stars. It was solid. It's a fun, light read. If you're looking for something that doesn't take a lot of mental or emotional energy to pick up and you kind of just want to engross yourself in a little mystery that also has some humor and a little bit of romance and different elements and friendships and whatnot, you definitely could pick this up. But it's not my favorite thing and it's definitely not clever in any sort of great way. It's just a solid mystery story. The one thing I do want to say though is that our main character is a cook and there is a lot of talk of traditional foods in here and there are also some recipes that are at the back of the novel and that is probably the coolest part of this entire story. Another book of the month story is Outlawed by Anna North. I read this a couple years ago. It's not really that memorable of a story, to be honest with you. The premise is quite interesting. It's a dystopian future where we have main characters that if they don't have the ability to have children, the women are essentially criminalized and shunned 
for that. So if you can't give birth, then you're just a terrible person. And you also cannot blame your husband for the fact that you can't give birth. Like men are not considered impotent, but a woman who is married to an impotent man is in fact the problem. So that kind of gives you an idea of where the story goes, but it's kind of a Wild West futuristic dystopian book where most of our main characters are all women and some of them are queer. So if you are interested in that kind of story, definitely take a look. You may find this enjoyable. The next set of books are actually the first three in the Witcher series, which are Blood of Elves, The Time of Contempt, and Baptism of Fire. And the only reason that we're donating these is because these were Keaton's copies and I already had some that are in a nice boxed set when he moved in with me. And so we're giving away his copies to the library and keeping mine. This next book is another one of the ones that I haven't read and it is a sequel and that is Black House by Stephen King and Peter Straub. I I did not like the talisman pretty much at all and I had already purchased this book when I bought the talisman because I was like oh I'm sure I'll end up liking it and wanting to read the sequel and I in fact do not so I am giving this one away and hopefully the library has a copy of the talisman so that somebody can read the sequel. Up next is a sci-fi story called Glow by Tim Jordan. This book is super weird. This is probably one of the weirdest sci-fi stories I've ever read, mostly because of the way that it's written, not necessarily because of the concepts in here. Actually, some of the concepts are great. And this is another story where the ending actually had me just mouth agape shocked because I wasn't expecting it at all. And that made me like it overall, but it's definitely not a story that I want to reread. If you were a fan of cyberpunk stories, characters with amnesia, or you want to hear about some weird type types of drugs that may exist in the future, definitely check it out. You may love this. Up next is Washington Black by Essie Adugan. And I originally read this story probably about three or four years ago, and I had already donated my copy, or rather I think I sold it, but my friend gave me another copy in a, just a large stack of books that she wanted me to take home. And so now I have another one after I'd already read this book. So I am donating it again, but it was considered one of the New York Times 10 best books of the year when it came out. And if you haven't read it, you may think that it's fun. It didn't end up being what I thought that it would, but it was still a well-written story. Up next is Big Fish, a novel of mythic proportions by Daniel Wallace, and it is also a scholastic edition. I bought this copy used, which is why it's already kind of beat up. Keaton loved the movie when he was growing up, and when I saw that it was based off of a novel, I hadn't watched the movie, and I wanted to read the novel first, and I did, and I can honestly say I didn't enjoy it all that much, which was devastating for me to tell him because of how much he loved the movie, and I got to kind of talk to him about this and tell him why and the things that happened in here, and I will say that the movie is extremely different from any of the portrayals in the book. So if you decide that you want to watch Big Fish, I would definitely say watch it and don't read the story. This next one is a huge oops on my part and that is Terry Goodkin's The Scribbly Man, a novella of Children of Dehera. I didn't realize that this series actually started as a sequel to another series that he had written with characters that had been fleshed out and had backstories and I had already gone on all of these adventures and I picked this up thinking that it was a brand new book series and I was trying to figure out why none of the characters were being introduced properly and why he was acting like I already knew who they all were and that's when I looked it up and realized what this was. So unfortunately, whenever you go to a bookstore anymore, or at least if I end up going to a bookstore, I have to make sure that the books that I pick up from these authors are not part of a series because I'm going to end up being in the same position. And I obviously didn't end up enjoying this book because I didn't really know too much of what the hell was going on. That's on me. I, like many children when they were young, was a huge fan of dinosaurs, and I happened to keep all three of the books that I read when I was a kid about paleontology and the different species of dinosaurs, and I feel like as much sentimentality as I have for these books that I'm going to show you, 
I definitely don't need to keep them any longer. I haven't engaged with them in years. I look at them and I remember fondly flipping through them, but there's another kid who is actively loving dinosaurs right now who definitely needs to read these. So the first one is The Little Guides Dinosaurs, which I'm fairly certain I got this at a Barnes and Noble and originally it was $14.95 and it had some really cool just illustrations in here and I loved flipping through it because I loved the way that the pages felt and also just the structure of the illustrations. The next one was Dinosaur Digs, a Discovery Travel Adventures book back when they used to make these kinds of stories and this is definitely mostly about paleontology and about the fossils themselves. So less so about the individual dinosaurs but really cool when you're a kid wanting to learn about what paleontologists do. And then this one was my absolute favorite dinosaur book and it was a guide to dinosaurs and I loved it so much because the illustrations were gorgeous, the pages were huge, there was a ton of information and I just loved this book so much and this is probably the hardest one for me to give up just because I remember looking at these in awe and picking out which dinosaurs were my favorite but it's time and I'm ready to give it away. Up next, I have Remarkably Bright Creatures, which I talked about in my last video, so I'm not going to harp on this, but it was a three-star book. I don't plan on reading it again, but somebody else will really enjoy it. And man, is it a beautiful book. Then of course I have Divine Rivals, which was another just meh book. It was okay, it was fine. I don't wanna read it again. And this one is so popular that I don't know how many copies the library already has. They might not need another one for all I know, but I'm gonna throw it out there anyway. And then if they wanna sell it at their Friends of the Library book sale, they are more than welcome to do that. This is the third and final book that I didn't read out of my set of books. And that is William Gibson's Mona Lisa Overdrive. This was another oops because when I bought this I didn't realize that this was the third book in the Neuromancer series and I read the first Neuromancer book. I actually have a signed copy of it. It's like a special edition book but funny enough I didn't really enjoy it all that much and when I realized that I recognized that I also didn't want to purchase the second book and read that and then eventually get to this so I'm just going to donate it and somebody else can have it. Now I'm down to my last three books. This one is definitely the odd duck out of all of them because it's actually a video game guide for Borderlands 2 and it is a limited edition strategy guide. I remembered going to the library and finding things like this when I was a kid. Now they may get this and be like, why in the world would we ever want that? And they decide to sell it. But the good news is, is they might be able to get a nice price for it. I paid probably about $40 for this when I originally purchased it. But I don't have any reason to want to take this over to a used bookstore and try to sell it. So I'm going to give it to them and maybe some kid will want to flip through it. But I love Borderlands. And then my last two books were actually part of a set and these are probably the hardest for me to give up of all of the books that I had when I was a child because they are the ones that I have had the longest. I have my earliest memories of reading were with these books and they were best loved children's stories with kind of like a puffy plush cover and five minute goodnight stories. And I don't know if any of you watching this will have ever seen these books, but they hold tremendous value for me. And just the number of times that I flipped through these when I was a kid and going through all the pictures and reading the stories, it, this is so hard for me to give up, but it brought me a lot of joy to think about a parent reading these with their child the way that my mom did when I was a kid, and that's a good enough reason as any for me to decide to give them away. I really hope that you enjoyed this video with Keaton and I talking about the books that we're donating and why we're donating them. They're definitely gonna be going to a great cause. Let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of these books and how you felt about them and if you yourself would also donate to your local library. If you haven't before, you should definitely think about it if you're wanting to do your own unhaul because I mean, there's really no better place that they can go. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening that you all stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time.